Hi, it's Renee with Harvest Hill Cottage. We are upcycling some old junk today and turning it into beautiful spring home decor. So let's jump right in to some fun projects. When I'm out thrifting, I always look for birds and bunnies and other ceramic figurines that could use an upgrade because a coat of paint just changes the entire look. So I don't care how ugly they are, I will snag them up and give them a makeover. These sweet little bunnies were dirty and old and I just cleaned them up and gave them a coat of paint. Uh, the color French Eggshell by Fusion Mineral Paint and then here I'm just putting on a whitewash over top of that French Eggshell. Um, and then just wipe it back so the whitewash kind of gets down into all the crevices. You could also use a white wax here um, or a glaze. I just happen to have some white paint close by so I opted to do the whitewash effect. We are resellers and these bunnies will go in our retail space as part of our spring inventory. Last year, I scored a huge box of these old vintage yarn spools, and I've been using them in projects off and on over the past few months, and I thought for spring, we would use them to make some fun carrots. So I'm just painting them up with some muted, uh, a muted shade of orange. Um, I didn't want them to be super bright. That's just not really my style. I um, typically go more with um, muted tones and neutrals so I um, I was really digging this muted uh, blend of colors that I created out of Fusion Mineral Paint and then I just went ahead and um, yep I just added some antiquing glaze and just brushed it on and then wiped it back um, and this just really muted the orange even more and just gave it more of a vintage vibe. So I'm really digging the way that this um, finish turned out. And you can see here um, one that's been glazed and one that hasn't been glazed. They're both really nice, but I just, um, I prefer the antique and glaze, I think. This is a garland I picked up from Hobby Lobby on sale last year, and I've just been clipping off that greenery and using it on my projects. Um, I really like to do that because um, that garland goes a really long way. I feel like you get kind of more bang for your buck uh, when you buy a garland. And yeah, I just snipped it off and um, used my glue gun to secure the greenery right in the tops of those spools. And it worked really well. They look really cute. And uh, yeah. Okay, I found this little tabletop decorative wagon at the Goodwill, and it's actually fine the way it is, but I'm just thinking for spring, it needed a little brightening up. So I went ahead and grabbed um, my white paint. Uh, it's the color Picket Fence, and I just used a dry brushing technique because I really wanted some of that wood to show uh, just so that it has sort of an aged, um, weathered look about it. So um, I just sort of slapped on that white paint using, uh, like I said, a dry brush technique. Um, dry brushing, if you follow me, you'll see it's one of my favorite techniques simply because it is quick and easy. You can flip something in just a matter of minutes and it has a really great um, vintage look about it. So give it a try. Okay, next is this little sweet ceramic um, Easter bunny planter. And I'm not gonna paint it because the color is pretty. It's in really good shape. I paid a dollar for it. All I'm gonna do is add some greenery and this piece will go right into my retail space. So can't beat that. That is a quick, easy flip. Sometimes things just really don't need to be painted. Hard to believe I'm saying that actually, but it's true. So here you have some more fun spring flips 
in this video. Let me know what your favorite is down below and if you would have done anything differently. I'd love to hear about that. Now coming up next, I'm going to show you um, some really simple spring artwork that involves flipping thrifted frames and artwork. So here is an old vintage wood frame with some really old art in, in it. And um, I decided to deconstruct the print. Um, you can see there it's from 1953. Really, really cool. Um, but the artwork was faded and needed an upgrade. So I created um, some new art just using some brown craft paper and some of my IOD um, supplies. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did that coming up next. Isn't that cool? I painted the frame and just added a really simple piece of artwork. So here's what I did. Brown craft paper. You can see here kind of what we ended up with. And I'm going to show you how I got to that point. So get yourself some brown craft paper. And you're just going to use um, a paintbrush and some white paint. And you're going to dry brush that paint right on to your craft paper. So load up your brush and then offload onto a paper towel. And then you're just going to um, gently brush that um, paint across your craft paper like you can see here. You definitely don't want a lot of paint because then you end up with a lot of um, wrinkling and bubbling up of your paper. So um, just a little bit of paint. Once it dries, if you do have some wrinkling or curling, you can use an iron and some parchment paper and just go ahead and um, iron your paper flat. Um, just make sure you do not use the steam setting and use it on a medium high heat. And then once your um, paper is dry and set, you can um, go ahead and do the next step. So I opted to use this um, stamp from Iron Orchid Designs. It's called Kindest Regards. It is a scripted letter. And I'm just using their permanent ink in black and just covering up um, every little bit of that stamp with, um, or inking every little bit of that stamp with the ink. And yeah, then I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it right onto my prepared craft paper. Just set your stamp down in place. Now, once you commit to a spot, you don't want it to budge. So I use one hand to hold it in place, use my other hand to just um, make sure that every little bit of that stamp makes contact with my paper. And then I'm going to re-stamp at another location. I'm not going to re-ink because I really don't mind if it has a um, really faded look about it. So I'm just going to go ahead and re-stamp without re-inking. And it's a little more faded than the other one, but I'm, I'm good with that. I like that look. So yeah, so there we have our background. And uh, once that is dry, we can go ahead and add the next piece. This is where I really like to use my scraps of transfers. If I've got some leftover florals here, I've got this little um, moth, uh, I believe that's from the Brocant transfer um, from Iron Orchid Designs. And just piece together some, like I said, just use some of my scraps. Uh, that's what I love about the transfers from Iron Orchid is you can cut them apart and piece them together any way that you like. So, um, and that's all there is to it. Just uh, add whatever transfers you like. I went ahead and took the glass and traced the outline so that I knew where to cut. A rotary cutter would probably work best here, but I couldn't find my rotary cutter. So I just used a pair of scissors and 
uh, trace that chalk line. This is another picture frame that I thrifted. Um, I didn't like the shiny silver, so I went ahead and just added some white paint. Again, I'm dry brushing here um, because I do want a little bit of that silver to um, peek through. So then I just grab some black wax and I'm just touching those details with the black wax. Waxes are a great way to highlight some of your details on your pieces. Um, and I just, you know, brush it on and then use my rag to wipe back the excess and um, just um, highlights the details, but also adds age to your piece. So just kind of gives it that vintage vibe. And uh, yeah, just don't be afraid to layer on your paint and your waxes and uh, until you get a look that you're happy with. And so there you go. I put it together with my little piece of craft paper artwork and I'm digging it. I really like the way this looks. It has a really sweet cottage vintage vibe. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of the projects from today, which one's your favorite, and which one you might give a try. As always, we're really grateful for you watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and come back and see us again. Thanks again for your support and for being here with us. We're grateful for you. We hope to see you again soon. God bless.